today we are reading chapter one of Romeo and Julio. Chapter one, fear. The water thundered into her ears, forced itself down her throat, and burned its way into her nose, her lungs, her brain. This water was fierce and deadly, no cool, gentle waves, but hot, choking liquid flames sucking the breath of life from her. She struggled, searching for air, for land, for something to hold on to, but there was only the water pulling her into its depths. She couldn't breathe, she couldn't swim, she couldn't even scream. The water filled her, seared her thoughts, and she drifted slowly into unconsciousness. The fire cooled, the terror ebbed, and the dark shadow of death embraced her. She drifted then in a haze of colors and swirls and black frightening void. Voices? Could she hear voices? One voice? Maybe it was a song. No, all was silence. Thick enveloping quiet that led to despair. No reason to care, to breathe, to live. So easy to let the silence swallow her. That voice, it pierced the darkness. It was calling her name, grabbing her thoughts and making her remember the fear, the pain, the cold, clammy water, the water. She gasped and the water grabbed her once more, viciously dragging her to its depths. But that voice, a man's voice, it floated down to where she lay, cradled in the arms of the victorious water. The voice called her one last time. Suddenly, Romeo sat up in her bed. The nightgown was damp and clinging to her body. She was sweaty and disoriented. Her heart still pounding from the fear of almost drowning made her breathing jagged and tight in the darkness. She turned on her light, looked around her pale blue bedroom and started to relax. She got up quietly, changed her nightgown, then opened her bedroom window. The night air was cool and soft. Peace and silence ruled the street. No cars, no movement, not even a barking dog. Slowly, Romeo began to breathe more evenly. She took a deep breath of the night. This was the third night in a row that she had been awakened by a dream of drowning, but she had been dreaming various versions of this dream for several months. She could find no reason for such a dream. True, she couldn't swim, but she wasn't taking swimming at school, and she purposely made her life tiptoe far around anything having to do with more water than a bathtub. So why the terror dream? She thought again. Why? And who did that voice belong to? She could hear it still, and it made her tremble, not with fear, but with excitement. It was not a voice she had heard before. She was sure of that. It was 3 a.m. Romeo knew she couldn't get back to sleep, so she decided to write in her journal. Writing soothed her, relaxed her, and tonight, she thought, was one of those nights that she needed to really chill. This was my favorite Christmas present, thought Romeo as she stroked the smooth leather cover of her new journal. She sat cross-legged on her bed with a blanket around her shoulders, relaxed a bit, breathed deeply, and opened the journal slowly. She carefully wrote her name on the soft cream-colored page. She blew on it gently to make sure it would not smear, then, with great anticipation, opened to the first page. She liked starting a fresh journal. It was full of possibilities and unanswered questions, of days yet to come and events yet to happen. She decided to start by describing who she was. Maybe somehow she'd find an answer to the terrible dreams.